Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's look at a problem, palindrome partitioning. So we're given a string S and we want to partition it in such a way that every single substring of the partition is a palindrome. And we want to return all possible ways that we can partition it in like by following this rule. And if you don't remember, a palindrome is basically a string that if you reverse it, it's the exact same string. So one thing to notice is no matter what string we're given, it's possible to partition it in this way. Why is that the case? Because in this case, we have A, A, B. We know that any any single character like A is a palindrome, right? If you reverse A, you get A. Any character including B is a palindrome, right? reverse it, you get B. So one way to partition this is take each character and separate it, right? And that's what the first partition over here is, right? Each character by itself. So are there any other ways to partition this other than just this single way? Well, if you take the first two characters, you see that that is also a palindrome, right? A, A, reverse it is still A, A. And of course, B by itself, we know any single character is definitely a palindrome. So for the second partition, we'll have two substrings, right? A, A, and B. So then this is our result because we cannot have any other substrings that are palindromes, right? A, B is not a palindrome. If you reverse it, we get B, A. That's not the same string. If you take this and you reverse it, you get B, A, A. That's not a palindrome. So the brute force way in this case to solve this problem happens to also be the main way to solve this problem, which is backtracking. So we are gonna use backtracking to solve this problem. And what we're gonna do is create every single possible way we could partition this and then check if those partitions form palindromes. And if they do, we are gonna add them to our result list, right? Because ultimately we want to, we want a list that has every single way to partition this while maintaining palindromes. So for the first partition, we have three choices. Do you see what they are? If we want a first partition, well, the first partition can either be A by itself, right? So A by itself, which is if we just took the first character and said that that was one partition, another partition is double A, right? If we just took the first two characters as our first partition or the last one, obviously, if we just took the entire string as our first partition. Now we will check, is this a palindrome? How are we going to check? Well, we can start comparing the first and last characters, right? And we see that, well, they're not even equal, right? So this is not a palindrome. So we are not going to continue on this branch or on this path for our depth for search tree. But we know that this by itself is a palindrome, right? So this is going to be our first partition. Now we're going to take the remaining characters A and B and try to partition them, right? So for one partition of those remaining characters, we could get a single A if we took this first one. Another partition we could get is A, B if we took both of these characters. But we look at the first character and last character, this is not a palindrome. This is a palindrome, but this is not a palindrome. So we don't have to continue on this path. And from here, we know we already took the first two characters as our first partition. So we only have one choice for our second partition, and that's just the character B. And we know a single character by itself does form a partition. And we also know that we have no more remaining characters, right? We already took the first three characters. So what this tells us is this is one possible way to partition to make sure that all the substrings are palindromes, right? Both of these substrings are palindromes. So this is one possible uh, solution. So now the only path for us to continue, we can't do this and we can't do this and we can't do this anymore. We don't have any more characters. So we can continue this one. How many choices do we have? Well, we took the first two A's, right? So now we only have one choice and that's going to be the B. So we, for our third partition in this line is going to be B. So this one had two uh, partitions, right? Two strings. This one has three and all of them happen to be palindrome. So this is also a possible solution. So that's how you basically solve this problem with backtracking. It's not super e efficient, right? It's going to be at least two to the power of N because we're brute forcing it. But now let me show you the code. 
So let's have our result. This is what's going to store all of the partitions that we create all the possible partitions. Let's also have a variable called part. This is this basically stands for partitions. This is our current partition, right? So if our current partition happens to be uh, this, this is just going to be the single partition. The result is going to be what stores the partitions, right? So this will possibly have, you know, multiple partitions in it. And now I'm going to create a nested function, depth for search for our, bra our backtracking. The only thing I'm going to pass into it is I, the index of the character we're currently at. And so since this function is nested inside this function, these two variables, as well as S, the string, are going to be accessible in this, even if we don't pass them into it. So since this is a recursive function, first thing we check is the base case. So if I happens to be out of bounds, so if it's greater than or equal to the length of the input string s, what are we going to do? Well, in that case, the same thing that we did over here, right? We knew that we had our a valid partition and we had no more characters to add. So in that case, we know that this is a possible solution. So what I'm going to do here is basically to our result, I'm going to append the current partition that we have formed. But not only that, I'm going to clone it because we know, or rather I'm going to copy it because we know if we end up in a different uh, recursive call making changes to this variable, there's only one part partition variable. So it's not like there are multiple partitions being created. We only have a single one. So every, every time we append to result, we have to make a copy of it. And after we do that, we can return because this is our base case. If we haven't reached the last index, what can we do? Well, we can iterate through every other character in our string, right? So we're going to start at I and keep going until we get to the end of the string. And for this meaning, so this is going to be our substring, right? This is every possible substring. And we want to know, is it a palindrome? So, so the indices are going to tell us if from a string s starting at index i all the way to j we're going to check every possible string i'm going to add one to j to get rid of the off by one error and i want to know is this a string is this a palindrome i'm also going to pass in the indices i and j so we know what our left and right boundaries are and actually since we are passing in these boundaries we don't actually need to create a substring we can just pass s itself so we want to know is s a palindrome if you take it to start at index i and end at index j. Is this a palindrome? And so if it happens to be a palindrome, I'll actually write this helper function later. We'll just assume we have it now. So if this happens to be a palindrome, what can we do? We can, to our partition, we can add this string. So s from index i to index j, get rid of the off by one error. We can add this. So this is our current partition and we wanna keep, because we know s this substring is a palindrome. And so now we can recursively do our depth for search looking for additional palindromes. And of course, we'll start at J plus one because that's going to be the next character. And after we do our recursive function, we have to clean up. So since we know we only have one single partition variable, after we have added this and added the substring and then ran our depth for search looking for all possible uh, additional partitions, after that, we can take the string that we just added over here and then pop that from our partition list. And that's actually our entire depth for search function. You notice we have our base case when we go out of bounds. And with this loop, we are generating every single possible substring, right? From I to J, we're checking if it's a palindrome. If it is, then we're recursively continuing our depth for search. If it's not a palindrome, then we're just skipping that substring altogether and going to the next iteration of the loop. So that's our entire function. And the only thing left for us to do is to actually call it. So depth for search will pass in zero because we know that's the start index and then what we're going to do is return result and before i forget we know we have to actually write this helper function that we called before we even wrote it so let's write that really quickly is palindrome it'll accept a string and it'll accept left and right boundaries so we just have to check if it's a palindrome so while left is less than right we'll check if 
the character at the left position doesn't equal the character at the right position, that means it's not a palindrome, so we can return false. If it is, if they are equal, then we can update our left and right pointer. So add one to left and subtract one from the right pointer. And if this loop, this entire loop executes and all the characters actually were equal, then we'll exit the loop and then we can return true because that means it is a palindrome. And now let me just run it to prove to you that it works and hopefully it's somewhat efficient. Yep, it runs perfectly and it is pretty efficient. So I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.